The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. Day unto day uttereth speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. And night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language. There is no speech nor language. Where their voice is not heard. Where their voice is not heard. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, o Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My strength and my redeemer. So this scripture was taken from Psalms chapter 19, verse 1 through 3 and verse 14. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have two selections from the choir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
just to do everything over again and all over again, amen. God's word is good, just and holy and true indeed. There's nothing better. God's word is good. There's no other way that you can be saved but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy? Thank you, Heavenly Father, Father. You bless me with today will be Brother Chris. The title, Death, Physical, Spiritual, Eternal, and the Resurrection of the Dead. Now the Bible speaks about three types of death. The natural, the spiritual, and the eternal. And here we got also the resurrection of the dead. And the Lord, he, he's, he's put this in the Bible to save our souls. So these, these things happened for our examples and was written down uh, as a warning for us. So we're going to pick this up at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Because it was uh, appointed to man once to die, but after that the judgment. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Brother Chris, when you get it, go ahead and read, brother. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So, so that's good, brother. So it's appointed to men to die once. This means it's going to be a second death, right? So this is why we want to get this right right now. So we're going to see when it was appointed for man to die. Let's go to the beginning when, it, uh, when man was created. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Genesis chapter 1. In verse 26. This is the beginning when man was created. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, mm -hmm. and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moveth upon the earth. So we see that God made man in his image, after his likeness. But we didn't read this man and woman has the same kind of body. Right? As this God. But let's see when um, this was appointed for man to die. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let's go one chapter over. 
And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Because we didn't read that uh, this man and woman had the same kind of body as this God. Well, let's see uh, when it was appointed for man to die. Genesis 2 and verse 8. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Okay, so this is when God put this man and woman in a garden. Go ahead. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So the Lord planted some trees that came out of the ground, and it was for food. There was also trees in the, in the middle of the garden, right, that did not come out the ground. This tree was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it didn't say that it came out the ground, nor was it planted. So we got two trees that did not come out the ground. So this tree of life is Jesus. I'm going to just let y'all know. And this tree of knowledge of good and evil is Satan. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead and read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, so the man and woman could freely eat from the tree of the, uh, of the garden, of, uh, from, uh, from uh, every tree of the garden. This means they can eat from the tree of, uh, of, of life and live forever, right? But um, what tree did uh, he command them not to eat from? Read verse 17 again. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. It said thou shalt surely die. This is for certain. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. So now we see when it was appointed for man to die once physically. Right? When we just read in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Right? So this is why we see graveyards out there right now. Right? Because man sin and the wages of sin is what? It's death. So we could have ate from the tree of life and live forever. And death wasn't supposed to be a part of the picture. But let's further uh, see what happened. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 3 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So this woman came from Adam, and he told her all that the Lord had told him. So she had knowledge. This woman had some knowledge and understanding. Uh, they could freely eat from every tree of the garden, but would surely die if they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is safe. Verse 4, go ahead and read. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So this was, this, this, this was a lie, and it probably was the first lie ever told to me. Okay? And this lie is being repeated every funeral. The pastor is saying your loved one has died and, and went to heaven. And we just read you came from the dust of the ground. Right? So that's your homecoming. It's only Satan that, that, that wants you uh, uh, that wants to go back to his home. Right? But he was kicked out. His ministry or his doctrine is is going to heaven. So, so who are you following? When you think you're dying and when you die, you're going to heaven. Who are you following? But then he gave the woman part truth, right? Saying, for God 
do of know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But at the appointed time, right? Not right there. At the appointed time. So he uses some confusion, like he always do. Right? So we get this change of body like our God that will live forever if we endure into the end. So the Lord did create us to be uh, gods like them and the same body that they have. Until the end, we just in this flesh. But um, if you never seen death wouldn't have uh, been in the picture and we wouldn't be dying. Y'all know what it says in Psalms uh, 82. I have said ye are gods and all, uh, all of you are the, the children of the Most High. Right? What verse you at, brother? Verse 6. Go ahead and read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. So this woman took the fruit, which is the conversation, and she did eat it. Go ahead. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. But didn't the Lord command them not to eat, the, eat, eat of this tree? Mm -hmm. The Lord commanded them that, right? Or for certain, for certainly, for surely they would die. Right. Didn't we read that? What verse you at? Verse 7. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. The Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Mm -hmm. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Mm. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm. So the question that was asked, who told thee that thou was naked? We know serpents don't talk. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. The woman did not become wise from eating the apple. We know this. We know this. Right? Satan, uh, he made a well of some things. Like you naked. Right? She didn't know that at first. Right? So through conversation. Now, what we can uh, learn from this is that uh, all information is not good information. And we got to be careful where we get information from, right? Because you can be getting some information from the wrong one. The wrong person can be giving you some bad information. That's right. But how do we know? We got to stay in this book, y'all. Because the book talks about trying the spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. That's how we going to know. What verse you at? Verse 12. Go ahead. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. Mm-hmm. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Okay, so now the Lord, he started to um, throw out some conditions. So right now, the serpent Satan, he's under these chains of darkness. We can't see him. He can't appear before man because of what he did. Right? This is the condition. Go ahead. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay, go ahead. Unto the woman he said. Now this is unto the woman. This is her condition. We see what he just did with Satan, and the condition he put on him. Right? He can't, he can't appear before us. Well, this is the condition he put on the woman. Go ahead. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. So this is now Adam's condition. 
We see the condition he put on Satan. Now we see the condition he put on uh, his wife. Now you're going to see what he put on Adam. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So now you must, you must work. And whatever work you find yourself doing to provide for your family, you do it with all your might, all your ability. Because there's no work in the grave. Ain't no work in the grave, y'all. So whatever you decide to do with your life to provide for your family, do it with all your might. Because ain't no work in the grave. We know that, right? What verse you at? 18. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So this shows you when you die, you go back to the ground. Where the Lord took you from. Now one time did we read you going to heaven. Have we read that yet? We ain't read that, y'all. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5. A couple chapters over. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to see here that Adam lived 930 years. And he died. So the Lord kept his promise. Didn't it say, thou shalt surely die? It said that, right? Well, let's read about it. Genesis 5 and 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Mm -hmm. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day that they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begot a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. And he what? And he died. He died. So we, those, we just see that, right? He lived... 930 years, and he died. So did the Lord keep his promise? Yes, sir. The Lord kept his promise, right? Yes, sir. He kept his promise. It says, thou shalt surely die. And what happened? He died, right? Adam died. Genesis 2 and 7. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to read one verse. Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to read one verse. So we see when it was appointed for man to die at the Garden of Eden, right? Now let's see what man consists of, the makeup of man, his soul. Verse 7. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, mm -hmm. and man became a living soul. So man consists of a body, which is from dirt and the breath of life. Your physical body is the soul. Right? We didn't read that he put a soul inside you. Did we read that? We didn't read that he put a soul inside you. So once he breathed into your nostrils, you became, you became animated. Right? Being full of movement, active. Like how y'all turning y'all pages. Right? You got some life in you. You breathing. You alive. You among the living right now. You ain't dead. Right? So in his most simplest form, man is body and breath. You take that breath away, man is no longer mobile. Or active. You're just going to be laying there. Right? Leviticus chapter 5. Remember, these things was written for us. So we're going to let the Bible explain itself. We're going to look at the simplicity of the Bible. Now all this stuff we've been hearing and how your, your ghost can go floating. And, uh, all this stuff we've been seeing, 
We're going to clear some stuff up today, y'all. Leviticus chapter 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. And then we're going to skip a little bit. Leviticus chapter 5. And let's pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing. It said a soul can sin. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And hear the voice of swearing. And, and hear, so this soul has ears. Because it can hear, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And is a witness. Mm -hmm. So the soul can be a witness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do know, not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Mm -hmm. Or if a soul touched any ah, unclean thing. If the soul can touch, then this soul got hands, y'all. Mm -hmm. We still talking about the soul. Yes, sir. Right? And not the one that float. This is your physical body we talking about here. What verse you at? Verse 2. Go ahead and read. Whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast. Mm, so this soul can be unclean, y'all. We starting to get a little more understanding, huh? This thing starting to sound a little bit simple, don't it? Not too difficult. The Bible ain't difficult, y'all. Right. Right? Go ahead. Or a carcass of unclean cattle. Or the carcass of unclean creeping things. And if it be hidden from him, he sh also shall be unclean and guilty. Mm -hmm. Or if he touch the uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be, that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Mm, so this soul can be guilty. Go ahead, verse 4. Or if a soul swear. Mm, so this soul can swear, y'all. This soul got a mouth. Go ahead. It's starting to sound... Uh, and, and it looked like we are the soul. Right? right? Go ahead. Pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be, a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him. When he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. Mm, so we're just looking at the, sim the sim simplicity, y'all. Right? Remember, these things was written for us. And we just letting the Bible explain itself. Let's go to Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27. Now the Bible talks about the spirits in different places throughout the Bible. So you got to know what it's referring to when it's talking about the spirit. The Bible talks about the spirit in different places in the Bible. So you got to know what it's referring to. Here, Job is applying something. We're going to see what he's implying once we read it. Job 27 and 3. Job chapter 27. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Huh. So here, Job is applying the spirit breathing, uh, the breath that's in his nostrils. Right? So we know what it's applying to him. That spirit is that, that breath that's keeping you alive. Can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all breathe one time? Just breathe. That's that spirit, y'all. That's keeping you alive. That's why you're among the living. Right? And the Lord be merciful. Right? That's why you did. Right? Let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Because the Lord said it was appointed for man to die once, right? And we saw when that happened over in that Garden of Eden. Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, 
for that all have sinned. So we see Adam brought sin on all men. Didn't we just read that? What happened in the garden? Because he ate of that tree, which was that conversation with Satan. What the Lord tell him? Who told you you were naked? We know serpents don't talk, y'all. Snakes, they don't talk, right? So because he ate of that tree, which is that conversation with Satan, death hath passed on all men, because all have sinned. And Jesus came in the flesh to redeem us. We believe that, right? Yes, sir. He died for our sins. And he gave us back access to that tree of life. Now, before Jesus came, there was no way we could gain access back to that tree of life. But God sent his only begotten son so we can gain back access to that tree of life. To him that believe and keep what? His commandments. His commandments. So even though we out here sinning, right? Yeah. We got a merciful God sitting on the right hand of the Father, being a mediator. I've been there, Lord. Give him another chance. Give him another chance. That's who we got. Right? On our behalf. And we ain't do nothing to deserve it. That's that free gift. That's that grace. Not to give you a path to sin again. No, now you got to Keep the what? You got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments. We got to do that. We must do this to get that access back to the tree of life. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. For all this I considered in my heart, mm -hmm. even to declare all this, mm -hmm. that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. Mm. So all our works are in the hands of God. Go ahead. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before him. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. So this is one event that has to happen to all. Go ahead. To the good and to the clean. To the unclean, to him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth not. Mm -hmm. As is the good, so is the sinner. So it happens to the wicked and to the righteous. Go ahead. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. Mm -hmm. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. Solomon called it an evil. Because rather you good or you wicked, it's going to happen to you. It can happen to you. Go ahead. That there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the son of man is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. So you live for a while, and after that you go to the dead. But that's the promise that the Lord made to Adam. If he's saying, right? right? He said you will surely die. That's for certain. That's right. And we see in graveyards out there, y'all? Hey, out there, right? Well, we dying. That's the promise. That's the promise. What verse you at? Verse 4. Go ahead. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Mm -hmm. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. He said, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Haven't we, we been breathing in here, y'all? We've been taking breaths together, right? That's right? Well, it's still hope for you. Amen. Don't hang your head low. It's still hope for you. You breathe it. We just breathe together. Right? We did that together. So I know everybody in here is alive. Mm -hmm. So that means we all got what? Hope. 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 We got that hope. And then he said, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. We know if that lion was alive, it would devour that dog. 
But because that dog is still alive, the Lord can still use it. The Lord can still use you. I don't care who you is. He can still use you. What verse you at? Verse 5. Go ahead. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more reward, for the, re for the memory of them is forgotten. So while you are alive, you know one day you will die. You got the knowledge, the know-all, the understanding that one day this body can go to the ground. Right? So the living know something. But the dead knows nothing. Go ahead. Verse 6. Also their love, their hatred, and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So your love, your hatred, your envy has perished. All of that. Your favorite shows, or none of that matter no more. Right? Your favorite food. All your loved ones that you love so much. That's why you got to do all that now. You love cook, you better cook. You better cook. You love loving. If you have that, uh, that love language where you love being around the people you love and you might love cooking for the people you love, cook for them. You love buying flowers for your mama, she's still alive, or your daddy or whoever, go buy it. Whatever you do, do it. Because once you go down to the dead, you ain't doing nothing no more. So do it now. Whatever you think you can do, do it right, right now. Make plans for it. Stop putting stuff off. Make plans for it. Skip down to verse 10. And go ahead and read. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Mm. For there is no work nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where the thou goest. So whatever work you find yourself doing to provide for your family, do it with all your ability. Because there is no work, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave. He said nothing about going to heaven, y'all. So all this hope you got, man, I'm going to look down on my family. I'm going to do some magical things for them. I'm going to sprinkle a little money on them. I'm going to do whatever I can. You're not going to be able to do that. It's over with. It's a wrap. Right. Toe tag. Body bag. Zip. Body. Cold. It's over with. Whatever you want to do, you got to do it right now. So if you're praising the Lord, I applaud you. I love you. Because that's what you should be doing. That's the only thing that matters. We're going to see about that eternal death. We're going to see about the resurrection of the dead, we're going to see. Because that body going to get raised. That's your hope. But the Lord's still giving you mercy. He still got you alive. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you is. It ain't over with until it's over with. So do what you got to do now. What verse you at? 11. Okay, well the Lord, um, he took you from the, from the ground, right? And when, you, and when you die, where are you going? Back to the ground. That's where they're going to bury you. In the ground. We ain't read not one time that you're going to heaven. Job, chapter 14. Let's see what he talk about in Job. Job has some wisdom, y'all. Job has some wisdom. Job 14, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Job 14 and verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. So this man, which he's talking about, which is us, said he a few days, right? He's up a few days. Think about it, y'all. 
He's up a few days. So we'll be dead longer than we are alive. Again, whatever you put your hand to do, sis, bruh, little sis, little bruh, do it with all your might. Anybody taking any type of inspiration from you, any imaginations from you, distance yourself from them. They don't know you. You can put your mind and do whatever you said you was going to do. You can do it. You got no choice. You got no choice. Because you're dead longer than you are alive. He said, he's up a few days. Few days. We know we're looking up these weeks going by like this. He's like, dang, all the time go. A few days. That's all you got. So why you here? He said, our days are full of trouble. We get old quickly. Our body started to break down. I don't know about y'all, I'm tired of working. <laughs> I'm tired of clocking in and clocking out. I'm like, man, I gotta do this again? My body hurt. Got wife, kids. I still gotta be dad that. I still gotta be the husband. I still gotta make my wife feel good. That energy gotta come from somewhere. You better muster it up. Cause these moments go by like this. I got look in. So I know everybody that's telling me they're going to grow up fast. So I know. My son Seth, he was just one. <laughs> All that time just go. Right? Our experience, our trauma, our afflictions. All that stuff breaks us down. All that stuff we're going through. Running about how we're going to pay the bills. Running about who's going to pay the kids' tuition. Right? Who's going to cut the grass? We fighting over all type of stuff. Right? Just do it. You be the one to do it. You be the example. Because somebody that's down and out going to be like, Ugh. they're going to look at you and say, man, I want to live. That person living. Every time I look up, they're going to work. Every time I look up, they're doing something. That's the hope. Because we look up 10 to 20 years go by like this. Y'all know. Especially the one that's older than me. I'm only 31. Y'all been here for a while, living. Continue to live. It ain't over with. Continue to, I don't care what they say. They mad they ain't your age. I can't wait to get up that way all day. So I can look and say, man, I can teach you some things. I can show you some things. I love my parents, right? I love what they did to create me and bring me into this world. I want them to continue to live. It ain't over with. Verse two, read that again for me. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. So he gave us an example. It's like when we see our shadow and then it's gone. Right? That's how quick life is. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead and read. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. So our days are determined and our months is with the Lord. And everything in life has boundaries, y'all. The water can't proceed further than the land. If it does, it has permission from the Lord. That's why you see floods. Right? That's right. The sun will always rise in the east and set in the west. The sun will always be the greater light than the moon. The moon, the moon will be the, the lesser light. Even man. We got our boundaries, y'all. Go ahead. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as in hireling his day. So, when the Lord has determined our days and our months uh, with him, y'all, when the Lord say it's time to die, it's time. He's determined your day. This is a lesson I want us to understand that, yeah, we're going to live life. But hold on. Understand it ain't going to always be here. So are we doing what makes sense around us? I don't care what it is. Ultimately, are we looking to have salvation? Are we looking to be raised in that resurrection, the first one? 
If it ain't adding up to that, y'all, I'm going to tell you right now. It ain't adding up. We need to rethink what we're doing. Skip down to uh, verse 10 and go ahead and read. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yeah, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Mm. So, uh, man give up the ghost. He read early in Job, right, 27 and 3, when Job was a planet, the spirit was the breath that's in his nostril. He's talking about the same thing here. That breath of life. And then he asked a question. Where is he? Where he go? Or where she go? Did they go to heaven, y'all? No. no, they didn't. We need to stop going past these graveyards and being like, man, my brother, my brother, my sister, my friend, they up there looking down on me. You just walked past them. We need to start using some Simplicity, y'all. Right? What verse you at? Verse 11. Go ahead. As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, mm -hmm. so man lieth down and riseth not. Now, whenever we see somebody walking around in the front of them, the one that was dead, they weren't walking. They was laying down. So man lieth down and rises not. You've never been to a funeral and saw a dead person walking. Be honest. You ain't never seen that. Go ahead. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Mm -hmm. So they was lying down in their box. It says, it rises not until the heavens be no more, they shall not awake nor be raised out of that sleep. They sleeping. Let them rest. Y'all right. need to be telling people, look, man, when I die, don't be coming messing with me. I'm waiting on the Lord. You still got chance, right? Go find it. Don't be worried about me coming to the graveyard getting unclean. Right? right? You need to let me sleep. Let me rest. I'm resting peacefully. You got people out here saying, I, I talked to my loved ones that passed away. If they did, no, you didn't. No, you did not. It's no wisdom, no knowledge, or anything in the grave. We understand that, right? So when you die, your breath is going to leave you, and you return to the earth. And that very day, your thoughts perish. What verse you at? Verse 13. Go ahead. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until, the, until thy wrath be passed, and that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. He said, hide me in the grave until thy wrath pass. There's a time coming on this earth when the Lord will make war, y'all. A time more difficult than it ever has been recorded. At this time, Job wants the Lord to remember him. Go ahead. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. He waiting patiently in the grave for this change to come. Remember the Lord said, let us make men in our image after our likeness. We have the image of God, but we wait on that change of body. And there's an appointed time when the servants of God will receive this. That's at the first resurrection. Go ahead. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. For now thou numberest my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? So it says, Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to work of thine hands. There's work to do. If you be so blessed to make it to the first resurrection. You got to fight with the Lord. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you got to fight. It's work to do. You put the work in now. When he call your name. Hey you. Get up. It's time to fight. 
In fact, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that fight. If we haven't read one time when you die, you're going to be flying around in heaven. Everybody that's dead ain't in the grave. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. We're going to pick it up at verse 10. The book talks about being dead in your transgressions. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, make us alive together with Christ by his grace. By him dying for our sins. So some people will ask if you tell them, man, they spiritually dead. And they go ask, man, look, how can they be spiritually dead? What are you talking about? How can somebody be spiritually dead? Well, let's look at this example. This is Jesus talking to his disciples, and his disciples asked him a question. Verse 10, go ahead and read. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So, the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou in parables? Why can't they understand your word? You speak it to them, but they can't understand you. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, mm. but to them it is not given. Go ahead. For whatsoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Mm -hmm. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Mm -hmm. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Mm -hmm. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. He said, dull of hearing. These people act uninterested about the word of God. That's right. These are the spiritually dead. Somebody got to say it. Well, why couldn't they understand the Lord's parables? Why couldn't they understand his word? These people dull of hearing. These people aren't interested in the word of God. How many times do you want to try to tell them something? Man, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I'm uninterested. I don't want to hear what you got to tell me. They dull of hearing. It's boring to them. They don't want to hear it. They dull the hearing and their eyes, they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. And the Lord shall hear them. Heal them. What verse you at? 16. Go ahead and read. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you. It's good. It says, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. We didn't already came to the conclusion that y'all alive, right? Y'all here mobile, active, right? Animated. Well, the Lord said, blessed are your eyes and your ears, for they hear and they see. I'm so happy to be around y'all. Because y'all hear like I am. And y'all see like I see. Y'all know what's going on. That's a blessing. And you got the breath of life. Oh, I love you. I love you. Because you hear. And you see. And you, you hear. That's amazing. 
That's truly amazing. But he said, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go read about it. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Who, who in here believe they're in the right place? I'll show hands. Everybody should raise their hand. Because you're here on the right day. I mean, you understand. When the Lord said, you see and you hear, he gave you that understanding. That's beautiful. Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 9. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 9. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. Mm -hmm. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Mm -hmm. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. Mm -hmm. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, mm -hmm. and understand with their heart, and be converted, and be healed. So these people that have not seen have not been converted yet, right? Can't hear the word of God unless they be healed. For now, they're spiritually dead. That makes sense? We're trying to keep it real simple, right? We're going to let the word of God explain itself. But why are they spiritually dead? Because of bad doctrine. Now we've been exposed to people. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. It's going to get scary. Isaiah 28. Let's look at this bad doctrine that's keeping people spiritually dead. Isaiah 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. This that bad doctrine you're talking about. Let's see how I describe it. Isaiah 28 and verse 7. When you get it, Brother Chris, go ahead and read. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink mm -hmm. are out of the way. So this wine and strong drink, right? Go ahead. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are all swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Mm -hmm. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Right? So this, 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 this bad doctrine, this is that, that, uh, that wine and that strong drink. Mm -hmm. But he asks the question, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Then that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What verse you at? 10. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So when you see us going from scripture to scripture, that's what we're doing. But we stand with the subject. He said, precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. So when you see us going from scripture to scripture, that's what we're doing. Y'all understand that? Yeah. But we're sticking with the subject. What verse? 11. Go ahead. For with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith. That's good. Go skip down to verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, 
I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So this stone in verse 16 is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Peter wrote about it. That's right. Let's go to Peter. First Peter chapter 2. Because if we're talking about doctrine, y'all, we got to add Jesus in it, right? Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. So y'all see, we've been sticking with the same subject, right? We ain't changed. And when you deal with sound doctrine, which helps you understand the Bible, the Lord's word, everything is based on Jesus. And the doctrine he came with, which is from the Father. Verse 1, go ahead and read Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speakings. This is what we must do, y'all. We got to lay aside all malice, all guile, hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speaking. Go ahead. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, mm -hmm. that you may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted the Lord is gracious. Then... We must desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow that by. He's showing us how to understand his word, y'all. So that we can understand when we get in bad doctrine. It might sound a little difficult, but I promise you, if you practice it, the Lord will give you understanding. That's right. And remember, this is why you breathe. This right here. So that you can understand bad doctrine. Yeah, you can go out and kick it with your friends and go to parties and, you know, family reunions and all of that. Right? But that ain't why you breathe. It's for you to understand the Lord's doctrine. He's showing us how to understand his doctrine right here. He said... Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow that by. Y'all want to grow in here? Yes, sir. I know y'all want to grow. Because I want to grow. Only thing that's going to help us grow is this word of God. What verse you at? Verse 4. Go ahead and read. To whom coming as unto a, light, uh, as unto a living stone disallowed indeed have been, but chosen of God and precious. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was rejected of man, and he still is for the most part, but chosen of God, and he is precious. Go ahead. Ye also, as lively stones, are built upon a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Now here's the kicker, y'all. He that believe in Jesus shall not be confounded. Troubled, damned, killed with the second death. Right. He that believe in Jesus. I know y'all believe in Jesus. That's why you're here. So y'all ain't looking to be killed with the second death. Well, there's some people out there, y'all, that's dull to hear it. They can't see like you can see. They can't hear like you can hear. Take advantage. The Lord can take it away like that. So we got to continue to do what we're doing. Continue to show up. Continue to get an understanding of his word. What verse you at? Verse 7. Go ahead. Unto you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. So Jesus is precious unto them that what? Believe. Believe. Jesus is so precious to y'all. I know he loves y'all. 
everybody in here got their own situation, their own thing that they're going through. But in everybody's situation, the Lord precious to you. I bet he is. You don't got to tell nobody the story. But you know he precious to you. So Jesus is precious unto them that believe. Go ahead. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. So these builders is your religious leaders that rejected him and still rejected him. So this is that stone, that precious cornerstone, right, that we just read in Isaiah. Jesus. And these builders that we're reading about as these religious leaders. They rejected it. And they still rejected it. What verse you at? Uh, verse 8. Go ahead. And the stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient. So he is a rock of a stumbling, even to them that stumble at his word. These are the people that's dull to hear it. They don't want to hear it. But y'all here because y'all understood. Y'all the ones that fell on good ground. We're going to talk about that. Go ahead. Whereunto also they were appointed. Verse 9. That's good. Isaiah 34. Isaiah chapter 34. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. So we understand about that spiritually dead, right? And we also understand that when you die, your breath go back to the Lord, and that body that you're in, where is it going? To the ground, in the grave. Isaiah chapter 34, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 34 and verse 1. This is when the Lord will fight against those nations. What you looking for? Everything you doing to be heard in the grave. Remember Job? Hide me in the grave to your wrath pass. But then the Lord don't wake you up. Then you got to get to work. It's time to fight. Well, this is when the Lord is going to fight. Against those nations. Isaiah 34, verse 1, when you get it, Chris, go ahead and read. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. Mm -hmm. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. So this is who the nations is rejected. Then we just read about that cornerstone that's being rejected. That's right. Jesus. This is who they rejected. He coming back with vengeance, y'all. Ooh, it's going to be ugly. It's going to be ugly. But you want to be right there with him, making it ugly. You want to be right there with him. So continue. Continue. Endure it to the end. If you happen to pass away, you're going to hear the Lord's voice. He's going to raise you up again. This is that hope, y'all. Go ahead. And his fury upon all their armies, he hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stinks shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Do that sound good, y'all? These are the people that's going to have that breath of life in them. Well, we're going to read about that resurrection, that change of body, even if you alive in the twinkling of an eye. Those that might not understand, we're going to read about it. Go ahead. Verse 4. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. This means heaven will be no more. We seeing this? Go ahead. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their hosts shall fall down, as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead and read. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. Mm, so what time is this, y'all? The day of the Lord's vengeance. That's right. 
That's the time we're reading about. Go ahead. In the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. This is the, the time the Lord is uh, giving a return on all the wicked for their wickedness. Well, when you go to work and you clock in, when payday come, you're looking for that, that check. Right? Well, when the Lord returns, he's going to be looking for blood. All that wicked that you done done, now with my return, ching ching. Some more time. Now I'm coming back for vengeance. I'll let you do all your kicking and all your partying, all that dole of hearing, what you didn't want to hear, now I'm coming back for that. He said, all nations, go ahead. Verse nine, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become That's burning good. pitch. But Job said, hide me in the grave until this time has passed. Right? We know a lot got to go on. We know trumpets got to be blown. Seals got to be broken. That's going to be an ugly time here on the earth. If you ain't made it to the wilderness. Right? Job said, hide me in the grave. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We understand in this lesson so far, y'all? Yes, sir. Praise God. All glory to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 21. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 21. We understand Adam brought death in the picture. And Jesus gave us access to the tree of life. First Corinthians 15 and verse 21. Go ahead. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For since by man came death, what man was this, y'all? Adam. Go ahead. And he says, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. What man was this? Jesus. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, mm -hmm. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So through him, all shall be made alive. Through Christ. Let's go to John, chapter 11. John over there by Luke and Mark and Matthew. John, chapter 11. Again, we got handouts, y'all, uh, of the lesson. The title, and then the scriptures is under the title. Hopefully everybody was able to get one. John, chapter 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. This is an example of the resurrection. And we're going to see when the Lord rose Lazarus from the grave, did Lazarus' full body get resurrected? Or did a spirit come out of him? We're going to see. John 1. John chapter 11, verse 1. John chapter 11, verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus mm -hmm. of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mm -hmm. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Right, so again, here's an example of the resurrection. We see Lazarus was sick. He's going to eventually die, but he's going to get resurrected. Or is we going to read about something else? Did Lazarus go to heaven when he died? Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 3. Go ahead. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. So the Lord, he loved Lazarus. Go ahead. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So... The Lord loved Lazarus, right? And Lazarus was sick, but Jesus knew he would raise Lazarus from the dead. Go ahead. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that he saith to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late have sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, 
Are there not twelve hours into the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of, of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things he said, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may wake him out of his sleep. Right, so Jesus tells his disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of his sleep. So Jesus knew Lazarus was dead. Right? We see this? Right. He knew Lazarus was dead. But the, the disciples, they thinking uh, Jesus uh, meant he was just taking a nap. They ain't understand. Right? So Jesus had to make it clear to them. Go ahead. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead, y'all. That breath of body that we've been in here practicing is going out of his body. He gone. Go ahead. And I am glad for your sake that I was not there. To the intent you may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Then, when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem. So when Jesus got there, Lazarus was in the grave four days already. Now. Skip down to uh, verse uh, 24. Martha said unto him. You know what? Keep reading. I'm sorry. Keep reading. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So Martha understood the resurrection, y'all. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Go ahead. 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. So then we read in 1 Corinthians 15, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Then we read that. That's right. Go ahead and read. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Mm -hmm. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. That's good. So the Lord knows at the last day when he returns, right? He that believe in him. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. At the last day, not now. So what's up with this uh, this uh, this rapture? What where we get all that from? The Lord said at the last day. Right? So everyone that has died is still in a what? Grave. In their graves. Skip down to verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, mm -hmm. and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. So when Jesus saw them weeping, he was, he was annoyed, y'all. And he asked, Where they laid the body? Right? He's frustrated now. What, what they, where they laid the body? Go ahead. 35. Skip down to uh, verse 39. Go ahead and read. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Mm -hmm. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? So Jesus did this so the people could see the, the power of God. 
That's why he did it, y'all. That's right. Go ahead. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. I, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. So when Jesus told Lazarus to come out, how much of Lazarus came forth? His whole body. That's right. This is the soul. Mm -hmm. This is the soul we've been reading about. Not something that comes floating out of you. His whole body came out of there, y'all. Y'all see that? And now, Lazarus still going to need that change of body. And he ain't going to receive it until the resurrection. Because later on, Lazarus, he died again. And he in his grave. Like Job said, hide me in the grave till your wrath pass. Well, Lazarus, he hid in the grave too as well, y'all. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to see here that all those that died in the grave, the righteous, they wait on their reward. Go ahead and pick it up at verse 1, brother, and read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the word the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Mm -hmm. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he died, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So except for Enoch, right, he didn't see death, but was translated. Mm -hmm. But these all died in good report. Yes, sir. They died in faith, y'all. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to verse 7. Go ahead and read. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not yet not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Skip down to verse 13 and read. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. They ain't received it yet, y'all. Lazarus is still waiting. Job is still waiting. What, are we going to dispute the scriptures? We're going to add from it? We're going to take it away? That's that bad doctrine, y'all. That's that strong drink. That's that wine. That's what's keeping people hard of hearing, spiritually dead, giving them the bad doctrine. We see that right here. These all died with a good report. They died in faith. Finish that. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So none of these examples have received the promise. And we should be happy, y'all. Right. If it was a so-called rapture, so we, we would be doomed. Oh, my God, what are we doing this for, y'all? Right? What are we here for? Well, we understand that this hasn't happened yet. None of these examples have received the promise, which is that change of body. But when will they receive it? Skip down to verse 39 and read. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, 
God having provided some better things for us, that they, without us, should not be made perfect. So none of these brothers, no one that has died in faith received the promise until we all receive it. When is this, y'all? At the last day. Yes, sir. That resurrection, the first one. John, chapter 3. Now, this was a Pharisee named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. And he understood some scripture. But he had a question for Jesus. John chapter 3, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. John chapter 3 and verse 4. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Mm -hmm. Can he enter it? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and so be born? So he has some knowledge, y'all. Nicodemus had a little bit of knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. This Pharisee. Go ahead. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. So Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? What verse you at? Verse 9. Go ahead. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye re receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man hath ascended up to heaven. How many men? No man. How many men? No, no man. No man has went up to heaven. Except what? Go ahead. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So that's Jesus, y'all. That's right. Lazarus died again. Lazarus ain't up there kicking it buddy-buddy with Jesus. Up there sitting on the right hand next to Jesus. He the only one they out there right. He the only one. Stop putting people up there with Jesus. Stop giving them that power. Ain't nobody received that promise yet. And the ones that's dull to hear, the Lord gonna have to open their eyes, y'all. He gonna have to open their ears. You just keep being an example. Just keep being an example. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. And we're gonna pick it up at verse 1. Luke chapter 24. In verse 1. Luke chapter 24. And verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, being, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. Mm -hmm. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Mm -hmm. And they looked and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They said they found not his body. Not his spirit was gone. They found not his body. That's the soul, right? Can we read about that? Go ahead. And it came to pass that they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, Two men stood by them in shining garments, and they were afraid and bowed down with their faces to the earth. And they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? They asked, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. Jesus got that change of body. That can live forever. He resurrected out the grave. Who looking for that change of body? Mm -hmm. I know you is. Yes, sir. That's what you're doing this for. Mm -hmm. You ain't coming here for no reason. You ain't paid for it. Not yet. All your works, that's a deposit. You're putting all that up in there. So you can get this here. Right? I know it seems like a long way. It's not. You're going to get it real soon. 
Real soon, you're going to get that change of body. Just keep holding on. Where you at? Verse 6. Go ahead. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? That's good. So that's the difference between Lazarus and Jesus. Lazarus died again. He went on that change of body to come. Just like all those that died in Christ. Did we just read that in Hebrews 11? Did they get that promise yet? They ain't got it yet, y'all. We waiting on it too. Tick tock, tick tock. Right? We waiting on it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So we got some people out there, y'all, that's curious about this body that we keep talking about. And they got a question. They want to know how the dead raised up. And with what body do they come? Well, we got to take him here, y'all. We got to let the scriptures explain. 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 35, when you get it, go ahead and read it. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Mm, so, here's a question. Asked about the dead. The Lord said every seed after his own kind, right? Well, let's talk about it. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Now, let's get understanding about these different bodies, y'all. Go ahead. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. Okay, let's get an understanding of that. When we put a seed in the ground, it don't just come sprouting up. It has to die first. It got to crack open. Then whatever is grown has to grow from that. Did that seed die first? Yeah. It's a thousand million dollar question right there. Right? It died first. So now we know in order for you to get that change of body, this flesh must fall off first, right? Then you get that change of body. It says, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. It's like, come on, man, that's common sense, right? We know that seed got to crack open before it becomes something. Go ahead. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Mm -hmm. But bear grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Mm -hmm. But God giveth to the body as he hath, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Mm -hmm. All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. Go ahead. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fish, and another of birds. Mm -hmm. These there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Mm -hmm. But the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the ter terrestrial is another. Uh -huh. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon mm -hmm. and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Mm -hmm. so, al so also is the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. It is sown in corruption. It is sown in corruption. This body can corrupt, y'all. Mm -hmm. We know that. Let it be dead for four days. What did it tell Lazarus? What, what they tell Jesus about Lazarus, he stinketh. Right. He stinketh. After four days. So it's sown in corruption. Go ahead. It is raised in incorruption. Uh -huh. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Mm -hmm. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Go ahead. It is sown in natural body. It is raised the spiritual body. Mm, so but there is a natural body, but there is also a spiritual body. Sir. I'm getting somewhere, y'all. Go ahead. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Mm, so to be quickened is to be made alive, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards <laughs> that which is spiritual. Right, so what you plant it cannot grow unless it dies, right? That's right. The seeds you put in the ground, you got to sprout. You got to crack open. You got to die first. Then it sprout. It cannot grow unless it dies. But some people rush into the grave, y'all. I just got to say. But they dying quickly. 
Because the Lord said that they don't have an understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom and the self-control and the discipline. We running out the stuff that's getting us out of here quick, y'all. Whatever it is, slow down. Stop trying to die so fast. You want to die when it's time. You rushing death. What verse you at? Verse 48. Read verse uh, 37. Uh, no, 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 that's good. What verse you at? Oh, I'm sorry, 47. Go ahead and read. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And, so, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Mm -hmm. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we, all, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Go ahead. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. When? At the last trump. At the last trump, y'all. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Mm -hmm. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. That's good. Let's get back down to uh, verse 24 and go ahead and read. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So this is when Jesus will at the end, right? He shall have delivered up the kingdom unto God, even the Father. Where the dead at now? The heaven? No. Let's make this a little more clear. Let's go to First uh, Thessalonians chapter four. And we're gonna pick it up. Go ahead and read. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Okay, so don't be sorrowful. Don't be in deep distress. Don't be sad for, the, for those that died in Christ. This is why. Go ahead. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So y'all have hope. You got hope. This is just a lesson just to remind you. You're doing this for a reason. Keep coming. Keep reading. Keep being kind, even to those that treat you wrong. Keep doing it. Keep putting on Christ. It's going to pay off. Go verse. 14. Go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also, which, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So the problem is some people don't believe in the resurrection. And hopefully after this, they consider that we're fighting for a crime. Right? A living dog is better than a dead lion. Can we read that? If you are alive, that's still hope to change. Because the Lord can still use you. But when you're dead and gone, that's it. The Lord can't use you. Go ahead. 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We can't prevent them which are asleep. We can't hold them back. We can't help them. Stop trying to help the dead, y'all. Let them rest. Let them rest. You can't do nothing for them. Nothing. You got that breath of life in you. Use it. We understand that? 
Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the, of the archangel, with, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when the Lord returns, those who died in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. Right? Those with a good report. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And right? So, so those who are alive shall change, right? We just read that in the twinkling of an eye. Didn't we just read that? Mm -hmm. And meet them in the sky with the Lord. That's right. It didn't say anything about getting the rapture offered to heaven with the Lord. It said he descended, meaning he came down. And they that rose from the grave and them that was alive would meet him in the sky. What verse you at? In the 17. Go ahead. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, let's see what they went after that. When they met the Lord in the air, he descended and they met him in the air. Did they go back to heaven? No. Let's see. Zechariah chapter 14. Let's see where they went, y'all. And I know this might be a simple message. Because most of this we know already. But for those who don't, just get them hope. Because a living dog is better than a what? Dead better than a day of life. Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. So remember, Job said, hide me in the grave until his wrath passed, right? That's right. So we know this is when the Lord was about uh, to fight the nations. Right? Like we read in Isaiah the 34th chapter. Yes, sir. In verse 5. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Mm -hmm. So we read how the saints met the Lord in the air, right? That's right. And where they go after that? The Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. Is that the earth? That's the earth, that's the earth right? Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure. That's the earth, right? That's the earth. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that we all on the same page, y'all. That's, right. that's the earth. Now, one time we read somebody going to heaven. We read, no man has went up to heaven except who? He that came down. Which is who? Jesus. Jesus. But just like Job, y'all, they hide in the grave. Until they hear the Lord call them out from the grave. So where the dead at? They in the grave, y'all. I love the fact that we're on the same page. I love it. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 28. John chapter 5 and verse 28. The hour will come, y'all, that everybody in the grave shall hear his voice. His voice. That hour going to come. Has that hour came yet? Not yet, <laughs> yet y'all. Not yet. 
John 5 and 28. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So when he called Lazarus, he just called him. Eventually, Lazarus died again. We know that, right? It's going to be a time he called all at the grave. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. This shows me everyone who has died is coming out the grave, y'all. Everybody who has died, everybody got to get this change of body. Everybody. 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 Unto the resurrection of life, and them that done evil, unto the resurrection of what? Damnation. Damnation. Everybody's got to get that change of body. Everybody. You're just going to be on the right side or the wrong side of the kingdom. You're either going to be in the lake of fire, or you ain't going to be in the lake of fire. What verse you at? Verse 30. Uh, skip down to uh, verse 21 and read. For as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, e even so the Son quickeneth them whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So, we know that all has to come out the grave, right? Whether you rich or you poor, you righteous or unclean, you clean or unclean, right? And in verse 21 it says, For as the Father raises up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. Jesus at his coming will raise up whom he will, y'all. Yeah? Let's get back down to verse uh, 24. Verse 24 and read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me. So what we got to do first, y'all? We got to believe. Has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. But it is passed from death to life. Yes, sir. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 38. Just go over to one chapter, John chapter 6. And then we're going to pick it up at verse 38. When you get it, go ahead and read it. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus came on a mission, y'all. He came on a mission. And y'all know what that mission was. Go ahead. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So, but not to, the, to his will, but the will of the Father, right? That's right. And it says, all which he hath given Jesus, he should lose nothing, but should raise it up again in what day? Last day. So we still waiting for that day, right, y'all? Yes, sir. We still waiting. What verse you at? 40. Go ahead and read. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Back down to verse 37 and read. Verse 37. And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Mm. All that the Father. Did it say some? All. It says all, right? Yes, sir. All that the Father hath given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Yeah. All y'all been coming. Guess what? The Lord ain't going to cast you out. Right. That's right. You've been doing a good job. Just continue on. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Amen. This is the crown you fight for. You're doing a good job. Don't let nobody tell them you're not. Right? You don't got them ears that's dull of hearing. 
Your eyes see. Your ears hear. I'm let me trick you. Go back up to verse 44 and go ahead and read. No man can come to me except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Guess who gave you access to Jesus? The Father. The Father saw you first. Oh, you should feel special. You should feel special. The Father saw you first. And right there, Jesus. How right there? Get him. And your ears heard. Your eyes saw. This is a very special thing, y'all. Job, chapter 19. We got two more after this. Job, chapter 19. Job, chapter 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Job knew the one that would redeem him from the grave. We'll do it. Job, chapter 19 and 25. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. So we just read all, right, which he have given Jesus, he should lose nothing but she raised him up again at the last day, right? Job knew this, y'all. And guess what? You do too. Ain't that special? Shouldn't you feel special? You know about this. You waiting for your crown. Go ahead. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, mm -hmm. yet in my flesh shall I see God. Mm. Go ahead. Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So Job knew who his redeemer is. Mm -hmm. So do we. We know who our Savior is. We know who Jesus Christ is. Job chapter 19 and 25. Then after they that are Christ at his coming. We know that, right? Our Redeemer lives, y'all. He lives. This is something to be real excited about. Even when you walk up out of here. I don't care if you remember nothing I said. Your Redeemer lives. Yes, sir. Go live. You got that breath of life in you. You got that breath of life in you. You ain't dead. Go live. We read that his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives with the saints. Read that verse 26 again. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, he knew what was going to happen to his flesh, y'all. You do too. So what? Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Job would see this out of his own eyes, y'all. Just like something had to happen to you. When the Lord wake you up, you're going to be able to see what's going on with your own eyes. You're going to hear that voice. Nobody else's eyes. Yours. This is what you come here for. Now the million dollar question is, how was the dead up in heaven and we haven't had the resurrection yet? That's the million dollar question. How the dead up in heaven and we haven't had the first resurrection yet? Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and we're going to pick it up at verse 36. We got one more after this. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 36. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to pick it up at verse 36. This is that eternal death. This is when Jesus' disciples asked him to explain the parables of the tales of the field. Now this parable begins when his farmer sowed good seeds in the field. But that night, one of his enemies sowed some tares in the field. And when the plants grew, the tares showed up too. We know how this goes. His servants came to him and asked him, where did the tares come from? But he knew it was his enemies that did this. His servants asked him, did he want them to pull up the wheat with the tares? He said, let the wheat grow with the tares. He will have his workers pull up the tares and gather them in his barn. Now Jesus is about to explain the parable of the tears of the field to his disciples. Verse 36. Go ahead and read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then so this is that second death we read in First Peter, second chapter. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus likened this parable to the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. He is letting the wheat grow with the tails right now. But long as you got the breath of life, the Lord can use you. Y'all understand that? Sure. As long as you got the breath of life, the Lord can use you. And when the Lord... Understand, it's going to be times, y'all, when y'all think the Lord done with you. It's going to be low points in your life. You're going to think the Lord done with you. Woe is me. Let's go to Isaiah 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Because he thought that was Death and destruction coming for him. Isaiah was at a low point in his life. He thought death was coming for him, y'all. But notice how the Lord pour, uh, purified him and made him clean. If you're working on yourself, don't give up. The God of Israel is purging and preparing you for his purpose. Isaiah chapter 6, and verse 5. This will be like, go ahead. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. He thought it was over with y'all. I'm done. I'm a man of unclean lips. Go ahead. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And all my homies, they like talking crazy too. So go ahead. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs off the altar. Mm -hmm. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips. Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins purged. So he thought that was death and destruction coming from him, y'all. But notice how the Lord purified him and made him clean. That's right. Keep dealing with the Lord. He's going to make you clean. And you working on yourself, don't give up. 
The God of Israel is purging and preparing you for his purpose. I hope somebody got some understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' holy name we pray. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.